Madam Clerk, will you call the roll, please? Councilman Lennart? Here. Councilman Pavescu? Here. Mayor Potemperi Duper? Present. Mayor Rigsby? Here. Councilman Daly is absent. There is a quorum. Thank you very much. We had a prior meeting. Is there anything to report? Okay, there was a workshop. You could have joined us, but you missed your window of opportunity. <laughs> okay, we will begin with an invocation and pledge of allegiance led by Mayor Pro Tempore Duper. Please stand. Dear Father in heaven, we ask that you join us tonight as we make decisions on business that affects all of us and the community at large. We ask that you guide us and guide um, the folks who run the city. Um, and um, again, please watch over and protect us in your will and your name, amen. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Are there any items to be deleted or added? Yes, yes sir. Uh, I would like to remove item number two and number seven. Okay. We thank you for that. And now is the time for anyone to speak on any items not on the agenda. Would the public like to avail themselves of that Wonderful free speech opportunity with a loud microphone, no takers, okay. We have some scheduled items. Item number one, there's a presentation of a proclamation uh, to One Legacy declaring April 2015 as DMV Donate Life Month. I have the proclamation here and it says in brief, a proclamation, DMV uh, Donate Life California Month, April 2015. Whereas organ, tissue, marrow, and blood donations are life-giving acts, whereas more than 100,000 individuals nationwide and 21,000 in California are on the National Organ Transplant wait list, whereas more than 600,000 units of blood per year are needed in California, Whereas a single individual's donation of, or, of organs can save up to eight lives. And whereas California residents can sign up with a Donate Life California registry when applying or renewing their driver's license or ID cards at the DMV. Uh, I, Mayor of the City, uh, on behalf of the entire City Council, do hereby proclaim the month of April 2015 DMV Donate Life California Month. And we have here Susan and John Van Campen from One Legacy, which is the uh, transplant coordinating agency for Southern California. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Um, I, I just want to tell you briefly why my husband and I volunteer for One Legacy. Um, I'm a living donor myself. I come from a family that has polycystic kidney disease. And our family was very lucky and blessed that the three, uh, my two brothers and dad, they were both lucky enough to have living donors who donated a kidney to them. But I also, in my job, work as a medical social worker on a dialysis unit where I have lots of patients who have not been as fortunate who all are waiting on the wait list. And unfortunately, we live in one of the longest areas in the country to get a organ, whether it be a kidney or a liver. And there's lots of people and lots of amazing stories of people who have had transplants. And this year I was fortunate enough to participate in the transplant games in Houston, Texas. And it was quite uh, a, a, a delightful to just be competing in um, athletic events with people who had double lung transplants, heart transplants, and that have gone on to do a lot of great things with their lives with the organs and that they treat them as valuable. Um, part that they would never have been able to do had it not been for the donor. So we really appreciate you making it. Yes. Okay, could you please come forward and receive the proclamation. Appreciation as well as we have these cards and help pass it on. So they're 
they have the website for, for signing up to be a donor. And if you are already signed up, you can just pass it on. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you for volunteering for our, such a good agency. Um, our next item is the consent calendar, minus items two and seven. I'll move it. Okay, is there any further discussion? Okay, those in favor of the consent calendar say aye. 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 Opposed, no. And that passes unanimously. We have no old business and new business. Uh, item number 13, request from Spanish Seventh-day Adventist Church, Mountain View Plaza, for a waiver of fee related to a conditional use permit. Community development. This is a request from the Spanish Seventh-day Adventist Church to waive uh, fees associated with a conditional use permit for a reverse vending uh, location or a small collection facility. Essentially, it's uh, one of those like the Goodwill boxes where you drop off clothes and whatever else. The uh, municipal code requires that um, there is a conditional use permit for any uh, collection boxes, typically to regulate hours, uh, clean up. Um, the, those things do have an impact on the community, and there is a fee that's uh, involved in processing that. Um, this was not a one-time event. This is a recurring box that will be living at that location and the box is managed by a company not by the church who um, is generating revenue for this and then sharing part of the revenue with the church um, so as uh, as the, that it is a, a use that does have an impact on the community and uh, the collection uh, facilities do require a conditional use um, and it does impact staff time and effort um, to develop that. Uh, staff recommends that we do not waive the fees. This is akin to uh, the other topic that seems to come up quite a bit. Yeah, the event fees. I'm I'll just weigh in real quick. I'm, I'm inclined to, to lean with staff on this um, because primarily um, it's not just the church that's doing it. They have an outside vendor who's actually making money and then splitting those proceeds with the church. So it's not 100% holy, just holy, maybe not an appropriate choice, but not 100% not total uh, um, uh, charitable, you know, um, thing that's going on, so. Uh, just for insight from the staff's perspective, this, if this was a one-time event, um, we, we would be looked much more favorably on this as a, and we do look at waiving the fees for special events and those type of events for one-time donation. But this is an on, ongoing occurrence that will have ongoing um, uh, activity and, and enforcement from the city. Where would it be located? At the Spanish church. It's the on Mountain View. It's on the far north side of the Mountain View parking lot. So where? Oh, where uh, we we do not have a site map yet. This is just a request to waive the fees so we can be, begin processing. So how that. big has it been? Uh, typically, those are the I don't know, a little bigger than the podium and about this tall. So the ones you drop clothes off in. Put that there. What's that? Sorry. You would charge them four thousand dollars just for the privilege of putting it there. Um, putting it in. We would charge anybody four thousand dollars for processing conditional use permit, um, regardless of who that is putting a bin there. Is there anybody from the church here to talk to us? 
again, just, just to weigh in, we're <clears throat> the way it's presented, unless the representative from the church says otherwise, there's a company involved that's making money on this. It's not just 100% a, a charitable effort on the part of just the church. The other, the other issue I have with that is where do we draw the line with other businesses and other people that come into town that have to pay those fees? Mm -hmm. So we have to, I, like going back to some of the other special event stuff we've been talking about, um, we, we start to get into a slippery slope there when we uh, pick and choose who we waive fees for. I agree with that too. I, I, I don't like taxes and fees in general. <laughs> I'm that kind of person, but I'd rather have fees than taxes, and I would rather not waive any fees for any use fees and so forth. And if we find we're flush with money, then I'd say cut taxes somewhere else. But I think he's, I agree with Mr. Duper there. I think that if we um, start trying to decide who's winners and losers here, I'd rather have no fees or or never waive the fee. That's my opinion. I agree with that. My chief question on this is. Um, does does our fee structure for CUPs unnecessarily lump extremely complicated ones with very simple ones? In other words, would we be better served by having a sliding scale of CUPs depending on the amount of work involved, or is it is it perpetual policing that we're collecting the fee for help me understand what the fee covers uh, typically the the CUP fees are for staff time to process um, the the application so there is some site review there are conditions that will be in place there will be some monitoring of that um, you know to answer your, your original question uh, CUP is a CUP so okay. um, regardless of the complexity um, we lose money on some you know, obviously we, we make money on others, but there is only one fee for that. And is the, it was the fee established, because it's, it's kind of an odd number. It doesn't look like it was just, you know, selected for its roundness, you know, five grand or whatever. It's 4,220. Was it, was it specifically designed around a certain number of hours at a certain rate, that kind of thing? Our, our fees across the board are um, based on essentially time motion studies that are updated periodically and that's kind of what it what it takes to process a CUP mm -hmm. you know, on the whole okay yeah, these yes. fees are not intended to be a profit center for the city they're based mm -hmm. upon the cost of providing the review and the services related to the application Okay, are there any other comments? Because I'm going to ask the applicant to come forward with his plea. Come on, come forward if you'd like to speak, um, representative of the church. My name is uh, David Stanky. Um, I was uh, just invited by the pastor because he couldn't make it, so um, I'm not really 100% uh, Okay. Sure of uh, the whole uh, deal of this box, but mm -hmm. um, the the church wants to help. Uh, somehow, we have a few uh, uh, community uh, services going, and this is one mm -hmm. of them. Um, I didn't think it was going to be that much. Uh, you know, four thousand two hundred. Mm -hmm. I will. I just pass this to to the church. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's. Um, I, I imagine you wouldn't know whether this would be a deal breaker for the for the vendor who's going to do it. And it's it's an interesting thing to me that even a place like Goodwill, I always thought Goodwill Industries was a charity, and it's not. It's never been a charity. Um, it's a for-profit entity, um, and I don't know who's the vendor behind this one, but. No, is this basically because they're using a box from a vendor? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. That's, uh, Maybe Conrad, do you matter. know? Do you know more of the internals and exactly how much the, what the vendor gets out of it and all that? Do you know that part or no? Okay. I don't know the, their financials and how that works. I, I do know that the church will get a thousand dollars per pickup or per emptying of the bin, but I, you know, they they haven't told me what the frequency of that emptying is or what the residual is for the organization. As, as far as a done. percentage of what the business gets versus what the church gets, do you know? I don't know. 
Do you happen to know what, did you have an idea as to how much money you were going to raise from this, or and did you have any projections that you were hoping to get from it? No, I don't. Okay. And then the other question I have, what, what prevents the church from just gathering clothes and bringing them to the, the building and then having that company come pick them up from the building once, rather than putting them in the bin? You know, that's a question I, I never, I don't know. Uh, okay. It doesn't make sense uh, to use a, a vendor like that, but, um, you know, that's a good point. It's probably a convenience issue of just trying to get people I imagine, to yeah. drive they, at any time. And do they, they staff it, too? Is that what happens? No. It's, no. it's like a, a goodwill, bin, goodwill bin just for clothing. Um, there, there's one up by my house, and when, when my wife cleans out her closet, it fills it up. There's another one on the other end of that same parking lot, right up against Barton Road. Oh, really? There's one there already. Correct, For right who? up against the Rite Aid. Yeah, yeah, right next, right behind the Rite Aid. I don't know who the vendor is. Okay. So thank you. Thank you. So um, is there a motion? Well, Any other comments? Yeah, I would, I, to me it doesn't really matter as to whether it's a private business or not. I mean, as far as the fact that they have a relationship with the with a commercial business, I mean, it's no different than selling cookies and anything else that you're trying to sell to the general public to try to, you know, raise funds. I am, I am a little concerned that, you know, it's $4,000 for staff to look at an application and say, yay, nay. I think our, our city has pretty good funds. I don't think we're going to go under if we make a 4000 I know there's a concern about slippery slope. I, I, I don't see, I think we have the discretion, I think in this case, I think it's a worthwhile cause. It doesn't seem fair to charge them $4,000 for the right of placing a box that might get, you know, maybe four or five people driving by it once a week or once a month to drop some clothes off. That just seems, doesn't seem fair. So I, I, would, I would vote in favor of uh, waiving the, the fee. Do you, would you like, in light of the fact that there uh, don't appear to be three votes and we're short one, uh, would you propose, therefore, delaying the vote for I kind of already know where the other gentleman is going to go. He's into big government fees, get as much money as we can. I don't think it's going to change the vote. <laughs> okay. I think that's another discussion. It seems high to me, but whether it's high or not high is not related to, I don't think, whether this should be approved or not. That's another discussion. Um, seems like it, I agree with you, it seems like it's kind of high just to say yay or nay on something. But if that's the case, then we should look at our fee structure and all that, not say, okay, that's too high, so we're going to waive it. Yeah. Well, I, I think that's one factor. I, I do think that we have the ability in certain cases to decide, you know, I mean, Gosh, uh, what was it, 10 years ago? No, not 10 years ago. Five years ago, the city gave, on an average, I'm sure I'm worse, Conrad, how many businesses to fix their, uh, to make them go up to code? I mean, we gave thousands of dollars to eight. private businesses. To, it doesn't matter. It's from the city funds. The thousands but, of dollars per restaurant. Yeah, yeah for them goods. to make. So yes. clearly, there's a role we as a, uh, as the government play in trying to work with our constituents, and I think this is one of those situations where, you know, it, and we might have an event where someone does want to waive one of the waiving of a fee to do a charitable event, and we have to make, you know, each decision based on the circumstances. I, I, I don't see this as somehow sending the wrong message or putting the city in a very, very challenging position if, you know, if, if this particular business somehow didn't pay their four thousand dollars, so it's. It, I mean, the cost is a factor. I just think that there's a there's a role for us to play in trying to work with our businesses and nonprofit organizations as much as we can. So, I'd like to hear from the city attorney on what his opinion is. <clears throat> well, I think it would be a, within the discretion of the council. You know, it, it could it could be an issue as to gift of public funds to a private entity and in that situation the council has the discretion to find whether or not there's a public purpose uh, behind the action 
uh, that is, goes beyond merely a, a private benefit. And uh, <clears throat> so I think you, it's within your discretion either way on this, uh, as long as uh, any action is supported by that consideration of public benefit. So would you make a motion? That, that actually <clears throat> might cause me to rethink my position a little bit. However, um, I, I won't at this time um, because I don't, I don't think the position is adequately represented on, the, on behalf of the church. I'm sorry, but I would like to see um, more information and from the applicant and some type of argument, um, a stronger argument. So you'd um, favor maybe continue the item and then we get so more clarity? either A, we don't take a vote on it or we continue it and maybe get some more clarification on a couple of those questions that we had. Um, <clears throat> um, so as if we were to make the argument that it was, there was a public benefit and, and we had an issue with the, the gift of public funds that we could make that argument, but we don't have anybody here giving us that information. So. Seems fair enough. I don't know. How do you feel about it? Is the applicant willing to come back? <laughs> Or the pastor next time. <laughs> okay. Well, I move that we continue that until the next council meeting. Second. Um, and I'll support that with the with the caveat that maybe we could get um, like a basic gist of, of of the fee structure at the same time. Yeah. We, we can get some kind of basic pro forma for you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion? Those in favor, say aye. 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 Right, thank you. No, it's uh, unanimous. We will continue that till the next council meeting. <clears throat> next, we have uh, a joint meeting with the Loma Linda Housing Authority pertaining to mid-year budget review. So I'm opening the Housing Authority meeting. So you can you can tell the pastor you succeeded. <laughs> okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor and the Council. Uh, this is the uh, the review of the uh, the mid-year budget. Uh, but before we go to uh, this fiscal year 2014-15 fiscal year, I would like to look at the previous year because what happening was last year we have a surplus of at the end of the year of over. $900,000. So the first thing I did was I worked with uh, Diana and said, where is the money coming from? How come we have that much surplus? And so what I'm doing is I'm printing out the, uh, the line item for, for last fiscal year and for the, of the revenue and expenditures. And I would like to point out to the, uh, the, the portion that I highlighted and explain the reason why we have a, uh, uh, additional and the reason why we have uh, uh, reduction in the revenue. So the first one that I want to point out, this is for the fiscal year 13-14, uh, and this is under the revenue. The first line item that I want to point out is the residual balance. This is the money that before used to go to RDA, the, the uh, uh, property tax increment used to go to RDA. Well, since RDA went away, the money is now go to the state, the county, the city, the school district, the water district, the high school, so different agency. Well, our portion of that is is positive, two hundred twenty-five thousand dollar in you know addition from from what we budget at the beginning. At the beginning of the year, we budget only fifty thousand because it's, it's brand new. We have no idea how much we're going to get, but we end up get the uh, four hundred fifty thousand dollars. So, the actual amount that we gain at the end of the year is two and twenty-five thousand. Another line item that I want to point out is sale tax. If you look at at the beginning of the year we budget about three million and this is at the beginning we thought that we will get some money from the manfield. But what happening is the money didn't come in because it didn't start on time. So we have a negative seven hundred and ninety six thousand. But because the way we have an agreement with Manfield they, we get the, the sale tax we give seventy five percent back. So there will be offset expenditures for, for the expenditure of the money that we're supposed to give back to Manfield. Next is building permit. We have a, a, a positive 200,000. What happened is last year we approved the budget in May. 
and well, after we approve the budget, the VA submit the uh, plan, some money for the plan check permit and building permit, and also the hotel. So therefore, at the end of the year, we have a positive two hundred thousand dollars. Same thing with the fire plan check inspection fee of thirty six thousand. This amount. At the beginning, we were budgeted for this fiscal year because we thought that the money would come in this fiscal year, but what happened, it went, it came in early, so it went to last fiscal year. Another line item is, is planning fee. Same thing, is it, the money came uh, the previous year. Engineering inspection, a positive of almost 100,000. Uh, engineering plan check, positive of additional 84,000 because the, the plan came in early. Refund and reimbursement, it, this is, we, we budget at the end of the year to be 254000 or the actual, I'm sorry, we received 254000 so a positive 108. These are the money that when the fire department went to fight fire uh, outside our city due to mutual aid, we received the money back from the state for, for our staff time and equipment. And another is overhead and O&M, we positive 156000 So. At the end of last fiscal year, we have a positive of $306,000 in revenue. Any question so far? Next, I'm going to go over the expenditures. If you notice it, at the end, almost every account, we didn't spend all the money that we budget in the expenditures portion. We end up spending less. So at the end of the year, we have a negative, which is good for, for expenditure. Negative is good. That's mean we didn't spend the money. Another, I want to point out for professional services, additional 131,000. This is for the building inspection because we received the money in early. We have to pay part of it to the uh, to Will Dan for, for for their part for the uh, inspection fee. So some additional local, uh, uh, um, uh, legal services, and this is the big one. This is the economic development. Programs. This is the money that we budget. If we get the money from sale tax from uh, Manfield, we will give them this money. Well, since the money didn't come in, we subtract that off. So it's a reduction. Okay? Okay, salary and overtime. This is, this is the, um, the fire department. I want to point out that because of we, we buy, combine with City of Colton in the uh, command level, we actually have some saving of 248000 At the same time, the overtime is more, but we get reimbursed back, back from the state. So that's, that's the way we do it. How, how much of that overtime do we get reimbursed from the state? It's, on, on, on this particular year, it's about half. Half, okay. But we also have some overtime because we have injury. Uh, the firemen have injured in the, in the, on, out in the field. So we have some and backfield the, with the overtime. The savings, some of the savings in the salaries because we had some vacant positions. It was filled with overtime, so it was a wash in salary. <clears throat> so the rest, again, uh, uh, as far as expenditures, it's all negative. Majority is negative. So at the end, I want to point out, so our total expenditures, we have a saving, okay? We have a saving by $439,000. And we add to the um, additional revenue, of three and six thousand, which in turn we have a total surplus of two hundred forty-five thousand dollars. Plus, at the beginning of the year, we have additional two hundred thousand dollars. That's why we come up with nine hundred seventy-seven. So this is what happened last fiscal year. Okay, that's why I want to point out why we have extra money last fiscal year. This fiscal year, twenty fifteen. This fiscal year. At mid-year budget, the staff take a look at how much money we spent so far and how much money we think that we'll get for at the end of this year, okay? Um, it's not that pretty, but I'm going to explain. Residual balance, again, at the beginning, we try to be conservative. We probably get about 100000 Well, now we're looking at $200,000, so that would be a positive of $100,000. Sale tax in lieu, negative. $519,000. This is the, the money that the sale tax that we, that this, the money is supposed to come to the city, but it went to the state first. And being in lieu, the state will keep it for a year. Okay. 
before we give it before they gave it to us. So we we'll get it back. We we get it back so that the the the, the, the state mm -hmm. get to get some interest out of it. Sale tax is negative two hundred fifty one thousand. Again, this is because we at the beginning of the year we budget quite a bit for revenue for for Manfield. We hoping that we get money. Well, because Manfield have address in Redlands address, so the first quarter in the state of money coming into the city, it went to the city of Redlands. So we had to work with the state, try to get the money back. Well, we get the money from the from Redlands, it went to the county pool. So now we try to get the money back from the county pool. So that's separate than we? the 500 that went. Correct. The board. the board of equalization follows the post office addresses instead of the actual addresses. <laughs> so you'd think they would know better, but. Just like your old house, so you in Redlands. I mean, you in Loma Linda, but your mailing address is Redlands. So, so the county has our money. Eventually, the county pool gets divvied up by all the agencies within the county based upon their actual generation of sales tax. So, basically, every city in San Bernardino County has a portion of it. So we try to get it back. Next is building permit is a negative on a two thousand, and the reason it's negative because because the money came in the previous year. Okay, that's why that's why I want to point out the previous year twenty fourteen is because the money came in last fiscal year. The uh, the property in lieu additional one hundred and ten uh, planning fee is a negative two hundred thousand again because it came last fiscal year. Engineering inspection. This one, I make mistakes. Uh, the plan checking fee, the plan engineering inspection fee is supposed to be $36,000. We make a typo, we put in $360,000. So that's a, that's a typo. Oh my gosh. That's a big so that's one. a big boo boo on my part. <laughs> the uh, refund and reimbursement, uh, we, we budget 20000 but we're looking at, we probably get uh, 83000 so that's positive of uh, $63,000. So, at the end of the year, we're looking at a revenue of negative $1.1 million, of which we will get some of it back from, from the state and from the county. And, and so, Maybe. huh? Maybe. We should. No, we, we should. We should. Next year. Or yes, yes, yes. Sometime. Yes. Now, one nice thing is this triple flip, the tax of triple flip is supposed to be running down. It's supposed to be end by, when is that? It should be ending in 2016. Next so after that, then we can just get the tax directly to the city instead of go to the state first. So we have to wait another year. So that's a big a negative in, in the revenue. Expenditure, we pretty much said everything stayed the same. Just some minor adjustment. Uh, uh, this professional service, the reason is is negative because this is the uh, expenditures because we already spent that money last year. Okay? So this good thing, negative number of expenditures is a good thing. Economic development is a negative 378 because we didn't have to pay the manfield for that half a million. So if we get that money back, then we have to pay this to them, the oh. 75%. I see. This is some minor adjustment. So the so, amount. So we didn't have to pay the, the correct thing until we actually get them. Yeah, but good. so, but still, the income that the state's holding, not all of that's coming to us. Some of it's going to be going back as a rebate to Mansfield. Right. Okay. Yeah. If, when, yeah. So, some minor adjustment. So at the end. Of the fiscal year, we are looking at our expenditure is going to be reduced by by uh, three hundred sixty-seven thousand, which is a good thing. But because our revenue is less, our deficit we are looking at you subtracted to is about eight hundred seventy-six thousand dollars. Okay. Now, when I first saw this number, I'm about to drop because <laughs> that's a big number. But if you look at it, it, it it's not as bad. It sounds like it's just a transitory because of different situations. Certain money didn't come in when we expected. Yes. We'll be getting some other. So if all those things had come together, what would have been the actual number? 
I'm, I'm looking at we're still going to be in negative, but maybe in negative about $200,000. Okay. Okay. Now, we never spent every dime like previous year, but because I've been cutting budget to the bare bone minimum, I doubt that we're going to have a lot of money left over. Um, yeah, so. <coughs> Were you going to show me where your capital improvements? Yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. That's the next one. Okay. This is it. What I just went over is the general fund. Okay. The one that I highlighted is the one that we're in deficit. The first one is the sewer. Now, we knew that from the beginning that we are in deficit for sewer. That's why two years ago we did the, uh, the sewer rate study. And, and we had a, a sewer rate increase. So it would take a couple of years for the, uh, the money to come back and, and be, be in a positive position. Another one that we're in deficit is landscape assessment district. And the reason we are negative is because the first 56, 58 district never have a cost escalation in the calculation. So the, the, we pay the same amount from the very beginning 30 years ago where the costs go up. But so, more than likely, I have to offset this with general fund, okay? Because I'm not planning to go to the voter and ask them to, to increase the, uh, the, the landscape forever, assessment. Though. Pardon me? You can't do that forever because that cost keeps going up. Well, that's what I think is I've been doing, try to change uh, uh, landscape to hardscape and, and, and reduce the water. So I'm hoping, because we pay ourselves for water for LMD. And, and I've had some citizens come to me and complain that their section of town is no longer verdant. It's now uh, concretious. <laughs> and I told them, you guys need to start a citizens, citizens movement to raise your taxes to pay for more because... It, I can't afford it, yes. Yeah, we're, we're not going to impose it on them. They're going to have to start asking for it. Yes. Okay, OV for uh, uh, storm drain fund. If you look at account 09, storm drain, okay, this is the money that we collect from the development impact fee. The storm drain fund, right now, at the end, available cash balance, we only have $250,000. Okay. I see it. And that project was 600 Yeah. So, so what my plan is to get at least the design is completed. This is to extend the storm drain at the end of Benton mm -hmm. to go out to, uh, to, to uh, San Tim under the, under the railroad. So right now, I'm working with the Union Pacific Railroad, try to get the permit. So I might get that done first, and then jack the, the pipe underneath the railroad track, and then stop. And then when the, the apartment projects to the north side of the, uh, the railroad track, which was apartment that was approved, develop, then we can condition them to put in, give us an easement so that we can put the storm drain in. Um, question, what prevents you from moving money from one fund to another? We, we, we can't. Legalities. It's, it's, is, is the money from storm drain can only be spent in the storm drain fund. The, the money in the, in the uh, uh, traffic impact can only stay in public okay. traffic impact fund. Is there any law to prevent general fund from replenishing any of these? You can do that. You can do, the general fund can be used for any of this. But what's happening is, yes, we do have money in the reserve, but we only have re between, between the unassigned and, and the uh, assign is only three point, no, I'm sorry, five and three is eight million, nine million dollars. And, it, and it's not that much. What, what's the pressure in getting that project done so quickly? We're in a drought. <laughs> no, oh, the storm drain? Yeah, all it takes is one another flood. It's, it's the spillover from Ovi's watering of his lawn. <laughs> and, and, you know, nine million is not a lot for 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 reserve, really. Uh, yes, we our general fund expenditure is about fifteen, and we have nine in reserve. It's pretty good. It's really do. It's percentage wise, it's very good. But if the state get away with with the trailer bill, they're gonna take away the two point three million dollar that 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 we pay our back. <laughs> that's three. That two point three that phew, can go away. So, and that's why we have reserve. And if we have a, an earthquake. A flood, it will cost that easily two, three million dollars to to yeah. for emergency. I, I have a question on a different subject. I was yes. looking at um, our parks development fund. Yes. Like All four. Yeah, three hundred seventy-eight thousand dollars. Can you provide 
us with an estimate as to how much it's going to cost to redo the soccer field over at the Bryn Mawr Park as far as, and I mean by redoing meaning, you know, you have to take out the. Bryn Mawr Park. The, you, mean, you mean by the Bailey Park, by the school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I meant. Yeah. As far as, I mean, really redo it, meaning you take this, the ground cover off, compact the land. So yes, it's probably two, three hundred thousand dollars. Oh, okay. Yeah. So right now we have, we plan to uh, replace the playground equipment at Elmer Digna Park. It's supposed to be coming to the Council for approval uh, at the next meeting. How much is the cost of that? We, we're looking at uh, five or six thousand dollars. That's pretty old stuff there. Yeah. Well, I, I, I have to yeah, go the back. The reason I bring it up because I was in that park recently, and it's it's in pretty bad shape. Yeah, it's. I mean, it would really be nice to be able to uh, redo it. It's it's almost like a. Um, what do you call it? A, a uh, well, a safety issue because some of the holes are so big. <laughs> yeah. But anyway. And again, the uh, it would just happen to be the vacant land that we throw some grass seed in. The goalpost came from the surplus from the city of Grand Terrace. Yeah. We just need to paint it. <laughs> the, uh, the ball field lighting came from the, uh, the cell phone tower that we converted. It's a, it's a ball field lighting. So that's how we operate. So yes, to spend, we want to spend money and, and upgrade the park as we can, but uh, we can use more water. And, and yeah. Yeah. Well, I just know that that particular field has been an issue ever since I've been on the council, and I was recently using it this last week, and I was a little horrified yeah. in yes. what and, bad shape it was. Yes, and the grass is, you know, because it <clears throat> is in the winter time, it's kind of dormant a little bit. So, yeah, that's kind of usually be a, a baseball little league field, and we convert it to a soccer field. So. We need to get to UAE to donate some soccer fields. Oh, brother. <laughs> <laughs> so, any any additional question? Economy is, is a little better, uh, but it's not quite there yet. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping next year will be a little better because the the hotel Holland Express hopefully will be will be in operation. We will get some T O T tax. Um, uh, we should get some additional revenue from from Walmart, the uh, the uh, grocery store, the all the uh, McDonald's, and see what happens. So. Well, we, and we also added, you know, the 99 cent stores, the gas station. Yes, the gas station. Uh, yes, the gas the station. VA should have bring in some property taxes from the VA. Yeah. That would be that would probably another, well, another two years. Yeah. yeah, but I thought we were going to get some sales taxes from the materials. Were we not? There is some. Uh, they're in the process for, I believe it's concrete and steel and the electrical. Um, we'll get the sales tax for those because they're over the $5 million trigger. Yeah, we did a book of towel on that. So. Is, there, is there any official thing we can do to declare a two-year budget to eliminate fears that we're running a deficit? I, I don't think you, you need to um, um, because at the end, we, we're looking at this. The, the the last column that we're still in positive. But what do you think, Diana? Uh. Work on establishing a, a multi-year budget, but I think retroactively, I think that would be difficult to do. Mm -hmm. But, I, you know, I, I would like to be able to say, and I think I can say truthfully, that we don't run deficits. We just happen to have timing of revenues and expenditures that were, were outside of our original budget plans, and it caused a massive surplus year. last year and a massive deficit this year, all because of timing. So to me, that's not a deficit. That's, a, that's just, you know, we, we can perform what... Accountants refer to euphemistically as smoothing. <laughs> the, the problem is if you do a two-year, three-year budget, that the same thing can still happen at the end of it can. the end of yes. one budget. You could have the same exact things happen, and then it, you know what I mean. So I have to be careful for next year. Uh, uh, those sale tax will start coming in, but don't forget, I'm not going to be spending just because. They because gas we, prices keep going down. Oh, speak speak of gas price going. The last couple of months went went down. Our gas tax reduced. <laughs> so, 
But but any politician that resents that is, you know, basically saying, you pay a hundred cents so that I can get one. Yeah. Yeah. It's that's kind of rude. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, that's the last item on the city council agenda. Are there any reports of councilmen? Shop in Lola Lemon. I'd like to hear about your trip to Sacramento. Oh. Uh, Sharp? Yes. Um, I was noticing that in the description of the mid year budget, we didn't declare that we needed to do the adjustment to the appropriations per the oh. presentation. So. Yes. We, we need, because of the last column, you have some positive, some negative at, at, at the, the mid-year. Mm -hmm. I would request that you approve uh, the adjustment that we, we... So is that one of the items on the agenda? Is that included as on the, the agenda? agenda? Is, the it, is that adequately noticed? I don't know if we need to. I don't see it. <clears throat> um, I was just looking at the agenda item. It's joint meeting pertaining to mid-year budget review. It doesn't spell out a particular action if this, and I, I didn't have a staff report which mentions that uh, either. Uh, so perhaps that could just be handled at the next consent calendar. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we have, under staff report, we, we do have, oh no, that's not it. I don't even. It's item 14. I don't even see a staff report on 14. Yeah, no. it's, it's just a slideshow. No. Yeah. Okay, so I think next. I think that would be the appropriate action, and we don't have to do an action. They just need to introduce it next time. I think yeah. it was the consent calendar, it, right? It could just be on the consent yeah. calendar. Yeah. Okay, uh, Sacramento report. Yes. Um, at the last minute, we ended up having to change because uh, Phil was going to go, and I ended up going. Got up at four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Take a six o'clock flight to Sacramento. Um, the, the purpose of the trip was uh, the League of Cities wanted, especially the cities who were going to be impacted by this budget trailer bill, which would, uh, if passed, um, basically change the rules that were already set by the Department of Finance and adversely, if possibly, affect us to the tune of about $21 million. And the, the goal was to have enough cities attend the subcommittee hearing, which happened that afternoon, and um, basically voice our concerns. It was very fascinating to be in Sacramento. I mean, um, that place is really a zoo. I don't know how anything gets done. But other than that, um, it became real clear that the committee members had gotten enough input from enough cities that they definitely were not happy with the way it was, you know, going the legislation. What I found fascinating was um, the, to the, for the first time, you always refer to the Department of Finance as those people you guys meet, but I actually get to see them now and actually watch them testify. And boy, I mean, they're in the Governor Brown's pocket like you wouldn't believe it. They actually had the audacity to brag that, the, that eliminating RDAs brought in an extra $3 billion to the school, which is just an absolute lie because basically they just took money from us but didn't give the additional money to the schools. Furthermore, they had the audacity to say that the, there were over 200,000 objections to their ROPs and only 200 lawsuits. So as far as they're concerned, there is really an issue, there's not an issue for lawsuits, which the reality is that those 200,000 ROPs was from multiple cities. And basically, if you think about it, they eliminated 400, about 400 RDAs, and half of the RDAs in cities sued. sued them, yeah. And there's some cities that are in really, real big trouble. I mean, um, gosh, we, there was attorneys there. There was about 40 people that showed up for this hearing, and they all, I wasn't able to actually testify because um, I had a late, uh, earlier flight at 5 o'clock. But, uh, I mean, Glendale was going to be hit, by, I mean, to the tune of like $70, $80 million. And there was no... No sense of urgency whatsoever, Sacramento. As far as they're concerned, this is the rules. You get to play them. If you don't like them, tough. I mean, they, they were, and yet at the same time, they give you the impression that we'll work with the cities. But in talking to various RDA uh, 
or former RDA members and uh, even over at the IVDA where I co-chair. They do a very good job of publicly saying we'll talk to you, but when you meet with them, they just say nope, 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 as simple as that. So on the outside, they give you the impression they'll work with you, but when you actually sit down in the meeting, they don't. So it's really frustrating. Uh, apparently, they're going to make some changes as to how many and what's going to happen. My personal view is that they're going to pass it. It's, you know, that legislation is owned by the Democrats, and they're going to go along with the governor, and it's going to, the people who've probably made the most amount of money on this is lawyers. There's going to be another set of new um, lawsuits. I mean, it's, it's so blatantly, they will actually make a law, you follow the law, and then they change the law because you misunderstood the intent of the law. I mean, a society could not function if you really go along with making laws like that. And a clear example of that is 200 lawsuits, and they claim that they didn't, you know, they haven't lost any of them. Well, the reason they, they claim that is because they're all being appealed, and, well, some, a lot of them are being appealed to the, to the next level, and some of them are end up going to go to the Supreme Court. I mean, it's going to go in. The politicians, some of them stay there for, you know, two or three terms. The governor will be gone. We'll be fighting this for years in courts. So it's amazing how one person can impact a state so negatively, move on, and then the population will talk about another issue, and yet we still deal with the re repercussions of his decisions. It, it's, it's just so crazy. So will, will this be fighting with – will this legacy of Browns be fighting with the train to nowhere – for the Hall of Infamy? Uh, I don't know. I just wonder which one will end up being the more infamous. Yeah. Well, you know, a hundred people... billion dollar train to nowhere or, or stick it to all your cities. Well, most people don't. You know, which problem, which people one don't, is the people bigger? Don't, people don't know about the yeah, cities issues. Yeah, this people isn't... don't understand this. They, they see the train issue. That's obvious. That's public. Yeah. But in, unless you're in city government, you don't understand how badly this affected yeah. local cities. Even the county level, they don't really care that yeah. much. And it, what makes it even worse, one of the things that th – this, I mean, I hate to say this. I mean, it's, it's communism, basically. We have the ability as a city to fight in court and pay for lawyers. Well, the state no longer wants to reimburse us for that. So in other words, if you're a city that doesn't have the money to hire a lawyer, you're in trouble. You're like a nobody. So luckily cities have reserves and they've been able to get some reimbursement for some of these fights. But one of the laws are passing because the state realized, wait a second, these cities are actually going to fight back and they're going to bring in big law firms against us. We've got to put a stop to that. So the way they're doing it is by they're going to cut the funds to the cities to make sure that the, fund, the cities don't have money. So, I mean, it's, they're, they're, they're not joking around. I mean, there's a lot of special interests up there. There's a lot of money. Um, it, it was amazing how... In this hearing, this is just one item. There's multiple items ahead of us, and um, a lot of them had to do with just different departments and funding. And every single item, you know, I need an extra 10 million, no problem. Boom, next extra 10 million, boom. I mean, they would just pass million and million, and as soon as they got to us, it, it's. I mean, th there was no sense of urgency that there was issues with money. So they were spending money like there was no tomorrow. But anybody who was fighting back about getting too much money, they were getting slapped back. So luckily the subcommittee is sensitive to this because, you know, ultimately, and this is the, the good part of our system, is that if the cities stand up for each other and they show up in force, they do notice because even though those, a lot of the legislators are up there with special interests, but if, if the council members get involved and they have quite a bit of influence with, over the constituents, they starting to get a little bit, you know, aware of it. That, so they're, they're kind of that's it's slowing it's so down important. a little bit. That's why it's so important. League of Cities is such an important yes. organization for us. It truly, truly yeah. is. And when you look at who's all involved, and, and, I mean, we've been heavily involved with the League for the last several years, at least, well, like several, yeah. a few of us have been on the board and on the council. There are cities that do not participate, do not. They pay their dues, but they don't come to meetings. Yeah. They're not involved. They have no clue. And League of Cities is our voice up there. And um, Yeah, they're valuable. We, really gotta, we, gotta they, they, we did a strategy station for about two and a half hours mm -hmm. before the hearing to figure out who's going to talk and what issues. But some of the cities were in such dire shape that they, they send their all, the whole council was there. 
you know. So some of us, you know, there was attorneys from lots of cities, a lot of city managers. And uh, so there, we're starting to fight back a little bit. And I think the lawsuits have kind of let the Department of Finance a little bit bloodied, but they still don't get the message. They, and if they can get the legislation to actually go along, they might make some changes to the legislation. It remains to be seen. But at least we're, we've slowed it down with this hearing, and I think it was worthwhile to go. But it was an eye-opening opportunity for me to watch the, them in action. That was the meeting. That was so meeting. one of the things that I've heard is that, you know, most state representatives – were at one point, or a lot of them were at one point, uh, council, members. council members of cities and things like that. And they seem to completely jettison that identity and side with special interests. A lot and, of career politicians, and, that's the problem. And I, I just don't understand that. I don't, I don't understand. So uh, people will say to me, well, I don't like so-and-so because they haven't served in a public office yet. You know, I, I prefer someone who's been seasoned and has, but it doesn't seem to do any good. You know, it, would one of us go up there and just suddenly turn on the cities like a rabid dog? You, you might because, or is it only you, one one no, group of people might, that do that? No, you might because your political party puts so much pressure on you to go with the flow. That's what happens, and and people get so comfortable in those elected positions. They want that title, they want that position, they want whatever, and they will do whatever because the party forces them to do it. And I think what's interesting about this time around, though, whether you're a Democrat or Republican, it doesn't really affect you, but it affects your city. And it, it actually, well, some of the larger counties got away with it. They're changing, they have enough power. They're changing some rules, like L.A. County. They're able to circumvent some of the issues. They were talking to us about it. But it, it got the attention of some of the representatives and even the more liberal counties up in San Francisco, because they're getting infected. I mean, what was interesting was one of the, what a mess. One of the people who really got affected was a, the affordable housing people. Oh, it's hurting them big time. So they actually, normally they love this opportunity for the state to put more money in their coffers. But what they did with the change in some of these rules, they will be impacted and they have less money. So they actually came and spoke you know, and most of the time, those folks are in you know complete agreement with everything that the state does. So the the repercussions and the the, the effects go across all party lines and all constituencies <coughs> in this particular case. So, but it boils down to the governor's office and really. And Department of Finance, the guy was a really nice guy. You can tell he was somewhat uncomfortable doing his PowerPoint, but the guy who was paying his salary was the governor. So he that's who he works for. So he was going along with the party line, and it's it's sad. So. So you stated that you had an effect, and and there seemed that cities had already got to them, but you're basically saying that they're going to pass the trailer bill quote trailer bill anyway. They are. They're going to change the language. A they, they're going to. They're, they're negotiating they're now on some of the language, but they don't. The the, the League of Cities doesn't believe that the changes are going to be meaningful enough not to have the effects that it will have. What it did is made them pause, and the League of Cities doesn't usually, they say, get to the level where they're asking us to attend, but they felt like this was a big enough issue that they wanted us to come and attend it. So they might end up having to do that again. But um, you have to, I, What's kind of interesting about league, uh, the League, and if you look at a lot of local cities, most local, most cities have a conservative governance. Yes. And um, that's, that's where you see you, people are taking notice. And um, what's really weird, something that's happening this year that has not ever happened, um, is Dennis Michael, the mayor of Rancho Cucamonga, is the vice president, which automatically means he becomes the president next year of the League of Cities. We've never had an inland representative, or the president from the inland area, Number one, but number two, to have a conservative Republican as the president of the League of Cities has not happened either because it's always been controlled from the north. Yeah, and it's 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 changing. Um, you could see the big shakeup this last year in elections where a lot of people were thrown out. I mean, and it, and it really doesn't matter so much the party line at the local level, but local politicians are conservative. They want monies for their cities. They want to have balanced budgets. They want to be able to provide services. 
and they're tired of the state taking all that crap and giving it away to everybody. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 changing, but it's I don't know. I don't know that it'll affect any statewide elections. Just yeah, too much interest, special interest money. For anybody who needs just an illustration mm -hmm. of the evil that they're that they're doing, here's my illustration. When they eliminated the redevelopment agencies, they hated it so much and they hated the city so much that they said, okay, under redevelopment, you were supposed to borrow the money before you could spend it, which is kind of goofy to begin with. So a lot of the cities accommodated that by loaning the redevelopment agency its own funds. And in our case, we loaned the money out of our water fund. Ten million dollars or somewhere around that amount. Mm -hmm. And then the law allowed us to charge, the, uh, for the city to charge the um, redevelopment agency a percentage. And that was the maximum percent, so that's what we paid. So we essentially paid the city investment a percentage over time interest. And that's money that could have been easily uh, invested in LAFE, you know, the local area, whatever, the investment fund. It could be, it could have been invested in, you know, whatever the law allows. And, and then the uh, city, in turn, borrowed money from the redevelopment agency to build certain infrastructure and programs that were helpful to the city. And that's part of what redevelopment is all about. It's about funding redevelopment. So here's what the state did. They basically said, okay, if the redevelopment agency is a bank and the city is a depositor and a borrower, they basically said, and this is, this is just rank evil, this is, this is despicable evil on the part of the state. They basically said, all of your deposits, we're going to keep. All of your loans, pay them back right now. And, and it was $10 million that we deposited and had earned four million dollars in interest, they, they took it. So your water fund, you know, when we're, when we're up against massive water shortages, Jerry Brown stole it from you. And he said, oh, what you owe us, you have to pay back immediately. So that's the kind of stuff. We're not talking about minor little things and, you know, these people are highway robbers masquerading as public servants. So that's why we sued them. And now, because cities that have the same beef we have, who are in front of us in the lawsuits, are winning. They're changing the law to make them lose in retrospect. That's what the state is doing. You know, this is the kind of stuff that our state is doing to us. And, and people back east, they go, well, he's so popular. Yeah, right. He's popular because people don't know what's going on. And that's my speech. It wasn't political. It was just it's affecting us. <laughs> if, if Arnold Schwarzenegger did it, I'd be denouncing him. If Gray Davis did it, I'd be denouncing him. I'm denouncing Jerry Brown. Come after me. That was the report of council. <laughs> <laughs> there you've had it. And by the way, our rep local representatives are doing a fine job, I might add. They're yes. doing their job okay. in representing oh. us. So All the people are evil in Sacramento or yeah. outside our jurisdiction. <laughs> it's true. Okay. Are there any reports of officers? Okay, then the city council is adjourned. We will go to the remainder of the, if I can find it, of the Housing Authority agenda, which we opened and dispensed with. Uh, there's a consent calendar. Oh, are there any items to be added or deleted? No, sir. Would the public like to speak on any items not on the agenda? <clears throat> Seeing no takers, the consent calendar. I move. Second. Okay, any further discussion? Those in favor say aye. I oppose no. It passes unanimously. New business. Uh, we have Loma Linda Housing Authority Bill R-2015-02, approving a home, loaner, uh, home buyer loan agreement for the sale the of a property. Can I just do that? 
There's That's a motion. Pam. Would you like That's to? Mario. You, if you, if we get a second and vote, we can do it without the presentation. We can just go on the I second. staff report. Pam, Pam doesn't need to present it. Yeah. Well, I'm just familiar with yeah. the items. So one of the issues is if you read the agenda ahead of time. Yeah. It's pretty common with what we've had before. Yes, we've talked about this many yeah. times before. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. It passes unanimously. Uh, we already have the joint meeting. Are there any chair member reports? Any reports of officers? No. And then we're adjourned on that. The next item is the successor agency to the redevelopment agency. This is the, the cleanup organization from the debacle previously described. <laughs> Are there any Question. items to be added or deleted? Uh, no, sir. Uh, I'll do it under reports of council. Go ahead. Okay. Um, Are there any uh, public comments uh, people want to make on items not on the agenda? Seeing none, uh, the consent calendar. I move. Okay, any further discussion? Those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, aye. no. Uh, it's unanimous. It's approved. Uh, there are no reports of councilmen, but I will grant you. Is it my understanding, and I don't know if, Diana, you can clarify this, or you can, Dusty, yeah. that the successor agency seizes its existence in July of next year, and a county successor agency takes over? <coughs> yes, that's how it's supposed to be board. done. But I just talked, I, I was at last meeting, last week with the uh, city manager, uh -huh. Meeting and, and Greg Devereaux was there and said the county is not in position to do that yet. Oh. So, they're going to have staff manpower that, to do That's actually going to open up another loss, another number of lawsuits as well, too. But so, anyway. so we, they prefer that we, we keep it the way we do it. Yeah. I, uh, that's the legislature, basically. In 2016, the oversight boards are supposed to be taken over by the county and Instead of the local taxing agencies being the board members, it would be county staff. So we're gonna have even less control over. That that is a big concern. There's, there's some serious. The county doesn't the want ABDA it. With that. The county doesn't want it. It's way too complicated. Yeah. And counties have a little bit better time blocking these things than we do. That would be something that I guess in the legislature that would have to change basically. Okay, anything else? Then we are adjourned, and that's the last of our meetings. Thank you all for coming.